Hi there, welcome to the Love Fly Fear of Flying Q&A. Um, my name is Paul Tizard. I, I'm just saying that because some of you may not know who we are. Uh, so we've had a lot of new joiners this week. So we're up to 2.2 thousand members, which is just phenomenal. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for whoever's been recommending us. And welcome, a huge welcome to all our new humans that have joined us. Quite a few questions this week, so a couple of things to cover off. So I don't know if you've noticed, we have some products in our shop, which you can now uh, buy. So if you go to lovefly.co.uk and then go to the shop page, you'll see that we've got some various things in there, like the Lovefly bear and some T-shirts and hats, because uh, we've had those for a while for personal use, and some people have said, when are you going to make them available to us? So we have. So hope that you like them. We've tried, we're have tried. we trying something called Printify, uh, which took a little while to set up, thanks to John. And he has uh, managed to get us to have a pop-up shop, which should deliver anywhere. I've tried it out myself. We are also just sort of testing it out. Quite a few people have made some orders already. So thank you very much for doing that. And I hope that you like what you get. It's always a bit scary when you put something out like that. Just drinking my coffee because that's the important stuff to do. Now, quite a few questions, like I said. So last week's podcast seems to have been very, very popular and is well over 1.2 thousand downloads already, I think. And last week's podcast was episode 130, which was a whole bunch of you lovely people coming in to answer a bunch of questions about uh, what do I do? I've got a flight tomorrow or the next day. And oh, crap, I'm panicking. What can I get? What can you do to give me some help? So that's so this week's I shall tell you about after, but I'm going to admit Captain Steve now because uh, Steve has kindly agreed to come on and talk to and answer some questions that have come up from the group and stuff. So uh, I'm just going to welcome Steve in now. Welcome, Steve. We are hey. live on Facebook. Good to see you. Hello, everyone. You're looking very brown and um, sickeningly healthy, if you don't oh. think so. <laughs> Weeding in the garden. <laughs> oh, so it is. oh, right, very good. Yeah. So uh, we are going to just answer. I've got a bunch of questions that we'll go through, and they, they seem to be quite in, in your camp this time, Steve. I hope that's all right with you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, there's one, two, three, um, <laughs> five questions for you. Whoa. So this is this is, than last time. Uh, this is this is the Captain Steve that you've been listening to on the podcast. So he's a real human, proper pilot that still tests and uh, certifies people and puts them through their paces in the simulator, which is, as you know, all pilots have to go through every six months, which sounds really hellish, but I'm sure you make it a pleasant experience as much as you could do anyway. Right then, so Absolutely. so Steve, thank you again for. I was thinking, I was looking at these questions, thought I could do, I could answer these, but I just thought you'd do a better job on these and I, you'd have much more. Detail. Oh, I'll try. Yeah, that's it now. I'll raise the bar. So I've got a few from Agatha, uh, and I hope that I pronounced that correctly. That, so, first of all, does turbulence damage the wings or planes in general? And if so, what do airlines do about it? Are there extra checks? extra extra checks done on the plane after it comes back from a flight that's had a lot of turbulence that's great uh, very one. good question very good question number one so um uh, the answer is no uh, they don't need to so um here's one i prepared earlier yeah, very good uh, yes. uh, so turbulence is uh, something that a bit like your car driving along on cobbled streets and it does this um if you're inside the cabin and you're looking up, you can see the wings flexing. That's probably what you're uh, uh, concerned about. Um, but I always get people to go onto YouTube and look at the making of these aeroplanes and they deliberately try and destroy them when they make them to see how strong they are. And then they bend the wings deliberately upwards like this, you know, uh, with hydraulic rams and they get to this position before they break. This particular aeroplane, the 787, they actually got them to vertical and they didn't break. So there's nothing in Mother Nature that will ever make a wing go that vertical. So the fact that they flex, which is really, really good, and, and they bend and the aeroplane moves around, which is 
not a problem. It's uh, uncomfortable for you in the cabin, uh, but it's not dangerous. So um, no, absolutely no checks are required uh, when an aeroplane is, is in turbulence. So there, you go. there we go. That's a nice one. Good one. Thank you. Uh, how dangerous really are batteries on planes? As many people have them on board these days, but also in the luggage. The same, that's for Magato as well. Yeah, I think um, that's a good, I think there's all sorts of laws coming in now, aren't they? Because they're deemed uh, they can be quite volatile, these sort of things. So they are restricted articles. Um, uh, you are obviously allowed to carry your, your own personal mobile phone and laptop with you because it's in your possession. But I believe uh, no longer can they travel in your uh, luggage, I believe. Yeah. Um, that's because they would be a restricted article because they're not, uh, well, they're not monitored uh, inside your suitcase. The fact that um, you have them on your possession and if something was to happen to them, and there have been incidences of mobile phones doing what you see, those crazy videos you see on TikTok and all sorts of things, they just spontaneously. Um, but the cabin crew are there to, uh, they're trained in order to, to put those battery fires out. So as long as you have it on your possession and something can be done about it, but it won't be allowed in your, your suitcase. Yeah. So just to add to that, so when you go through security, if you think, ah, oh, I'm just going to sneak this through, you've got, oh. obviously got to go through the, the what you would call the overt scanners. And I'm thinking of David Gott stuff now, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on which you don't see. Yeah. So uh, there's all these extra measures in place in case anyone thinks, aha, I don't want to carry mine. Absolutely. Um, so this question's from Catherine. She says, I have two questions. Can you please explain what a mid-air stall is? And can you explain or, and yeah, there is another question about stalling as well. Because I think when people say stall, I think they meet, they think like a, like a stall in your car, don't they? Rather than what we might be. So if you could explain stalling as a concept, I think that'll be helpful. Okay, so first of all, yes, that's uh, definitely the wrong term. So stalling is done in flight testing. Uh, so it's called upset recovery technique. So um, a stall is when um, the angle of attack of the wing through the air is obviously too great. And stalling is recovered during, it's only during airplane testing or when a pilot's going through a, um, his, his or her licenses in order to be able to recover from a stall. So an airliner wouldn't be in a stall. So correct me if I'm, I don't know if you uh, can let Paul know, but um, is it you're talking about you've felt a dropping sensation? Is that what you mean by a so, stall? I might be able to add some more to this. So um, because Helen has asked a similar question. So hers is might, this might be linked. So my biggest fear is, is the landing. I fear the plane will stall when it's slowing down and drop out of the sky. Can this ever happen? Oh, no. So, um, well, so yeah, I, I think uh, I can answer both questions with that, that one. So um, air is always present, it's omnipresent. So if you consider it like, you know, it's like honey, it's always sticking to the wings um, and uh, it gives lift. So you will never have this sensation of, if that's the sensation you're worried about stalling and dropping out of the sky. So that wouldn't happen. So uh, even in turbulence, so we, we don't, drop like that we just adjust our altitude because obviously the air is being disturbed over the the, the surface of the wings um so when we're coming into land uh, the reason why we can slow up so much is because on the back of the wings we have these things called flaps and in order to slow down and then and give us lots and lots of lift um the equation half rho v squared s from people who've been in the courses um we make the wings bigger <laughs> We make the wings bigger and um, we increase the surface areas. That means we can slow down. V can be get, become slower. So what we do is we slow down to, depending on the weight of the aeroplane for landing, um, but roughly you'll be landing about 150, 160 miles an hour. But if we make these really, really big by the hydraulic motors, putting the flaps out, we make the surface area bigger, which means we can slow down and that gives us more lift and we land beautifully. But that's not going to happen when we uh, when we slow down. That's um, uh, I just, think people might think stalling means like your engine stops, like it does in the car. Like oh, okay. So off. yeah, I'm not assuming that's what they mean, but sometimes people do think that, don't they? Okay, yeah, stalling. No, so that's um uh, that goes into the territory of engine failures, uh, which we practice um, regularly as as pilots. And um, Paul talked about the simulator, so 
uh, when we're in the simulator for two days um, every six months. That's something that we practice all the time. And it's just our bread and butter. So aeroplanes can fly with, um, with engine failures, not a problem. Nice, thank you for that. Uh, so this question's from Catherine as well, part two. This is the second question. So can you explain how the weight is dis distributed within the aeroplane, please? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, so uh, <laughs> well, great. Thanks very much. Um, yeah. So uh, you're talking about the centre of gravity, uh, Lynn, and there's also the centre of pressure, which also is to do with lift over wings. Um, but the centre of gravity, uh, roughly, if you look at an aeroplane on the ground, so if you think of all this, this weight, and so the centre of gravity is going to roughly be just forward of the wings, so you can see that everything goes backwards and all. So, um, and in flight, of course, uh, it's very important that the centre of gravity maintains um, within a certain envelope. It will change, and the reason why it changes is because the weight of the aeroplane changes during flight because we burn fuel. So we have lots and lots of fuel in the belly of the aeroplane, and the wings are also full of fuel. So we burn the fuel in the belly first, <clears throat> followed by burning the fuel in the wings. We don't burn all it, of course, we, we land with lots of extra fuel. Um, so that's how the weight's distributed. And then of course, when we load passengers and baggage, so a certain amount of baggage will go in the front holds and a certain amount of baggage will go in the rear holds. And then of course, passengers are located throughout the, uh, the tube. So it's all very clever. It's done by computers called a weight and balance computer and we get to the center of gravity before takeoff, once everything is loaded in the airplane. And that's something that we load into our flight management system in order for us to uh, also calculate the right speeds for takeoff, depending on the weight. Nice. Uh, so this is a question, uh, for, I knew that was much better than I would have said it. Uh, so Agatha said, that there's a, we'll take the opportunity to ask one more question. Yesterday, Many flights were cancelled in the UK because of thunderstorms. That's very good and reassuring. However, Captain Steve, open brackets, my idol, close brackets. I'm telling you this because Steve's not on Facebook, you see, because he, uh, he, I don't know why he he's just he's just not. So he doesn't see these messages. I wouldn't know how to use it. <laughs> um, however, Captain Steve says in one of the podcasts that thunderstorms are not dangerous. But for nervous flyers like me, it makes me think, if they're not dangerous, then why are flights cancelled? Now, if they turn out to be dangerous, is it more dangerous to encounter a thunderstorm at cruising altitude or during takeoff landing or both? So in short, <laughs> I love this, why are flights <laughs> grounded during thunderstorms if they're not dangerous? She says thank you with an exclamation mark. Pleasure. Excellent, excellent question. Um, there was a very good reason for uh, why, why they're sometimes cancelled around the airport. So first of all, in answer to your question, um, it's no more uh, dangerous or um, uh, unsafe if they're at altitude there, but, but the big difference is if they're, uh, we fly around them. Uh, I think you've probably seen in all the podcasts that we have weather radars on board. Um, you can go through them. As we've always said, there are, uh, pilots that for a living are hurricane um, hunters and they fly into the middle of a hurricane, not a thunderstorm, a hurricane, which is 10 times more powerful than that, or 100 times more powerful. So, um, and the aeroplane obviously uh, copes with it well. But the reason why we go round thunderstorms is because obviously um, the turbulence is very bad inside them and hailstones, etc. So the reason why they would have been cancelled yesterday throughout the United Kingdom around airfields is Obviously, because we want to go around them, if they're actually right over the uh, terminal area of the, the airport, then obviously on departure, there won't be enough room for aeroplanes to manoeuvre or likewise coming into land. So that's why uh, aeroplanes would, would be grounded and not take off, simply because there's not a, uh, a satisfactory route around them. And likewise, aeroplanes coming into wherever it be, Heathrow or Gatwick, um, if there's not sufficient room to manoeuvre around, then they'll divert to go to another airfield and wait for the storms to pass. So that happens more um, in America. And it's very rare that it happens in the UK because our storms are somewhat smaller than, uh, I know we have an inferior complex to the weather systems in America, but um, uh, that's a very common thing in, in Florida, for example, um, from sort of September onwards. Um, 
and at altitude we've got our weather radars you see them and then we would just fly a big course around them so yeah um sometimes they don't block the whole of the arrival area in, in an airport and of course yeah you might get a side swipe of one of them again and it will be a little bit bumpy on on the approach but um if they're not covering the whole of the airport area um then flights will will continue but there's a very good reason that you know everyone learns on the the side of safety and comfort so if we can avoid them then we will okay that's brilliant thank you so you um agatha says thank you um melissa says uh, hi steve i've had lots of great feedback from our podcast so you know that one there where she grilled oh. you <clears throat> and uh, uh, yeah. the cases. <laughs> oh perfect oh good yeah. Oh, well, you're armed with all the knowledge now, which is great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, that's all the questions that I've got on the on the thing that I can see anyway. So thanks ever so much for posting. And Steve, thanks for jumping on. I literally buzzed him about 10 minutes before. So I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live. Any chance you're around? Because there's questions which I think more, you know, you've got to stay in your lane, haven't you? When you're, you're doing this sort of stuff. <laughs> Although I've been listening to amazing pilots like Steve for a long time. I think it's still better coming from somebody who's doing it properly, <laughs> like you are. So thank My you. My pleasure. No, no, it's a pleasure. You're a good man. Nice I don't to see care everyone. What the others yeah. say. I think you're a good <laughs> man. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if, like always, these happen every week. Uh, we've got a load of new members. We've got two point two thousand members in the Facebook group now, Captain Steve. So these humans are coming through. Don't know where they come from, but you're very, very welcome. And uh, we do this every week. We don't can't always have the luxury of having Steve here, but sometimes we get the odd guests that comes along. And uh, but we'll always try to answer your questions so we can in the group. But obviously, if you need more help, we do run occasional webinars, and we have the thirty day program and instant download webinar for people who want to get some help straight away, which is proven to be very helpful. And we've got other things as well, like our premium courses. We will have some announcements in the coming weeks of some other things that are coming up, but uh, more of that later. So, so thank you very much for watching. And Steve, thanks ever so much for dialing in. Great to see you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye, everyone. Take care. Gin and tonic time. <laughs>